this is the lathe I've been using for the last few years. It's my brother's lathe. It's a, a Chester DB8 VS variable speed. The speed is, I'll just turn the thing on. Speed is, um, let's check that. Everything's safe, so. Speed is variable infinitely using this, um, this knob actually. Between very slow and very fast, which is incredibly convenient. Um, although the controller board, the speed controller board, which is now fitted as a replacement for one I blew up, and it's a little bit jumpy, it needs adjusting, so it tends to hunt for the speed um, that it's set to. Um, but anyway, it's a very nice lathe, um, a modern lathe. Um, but uh, my brother's moved away, and I'll have to give him this, this lathe back very shortly, so um, I decided to buy a lathe of my own, and that's this one. Bought it on eBay, second hand. It's a Sealy SM27, which is also a Waco 430, I think, and a Clark CM500 or something like that. I don't know. And it's um, I don't actually know how old the lathe is in design or manufacture, but um, it's a more old-fashioned lathe. If you look at this one, it looks more modern. Um, if you look at this one, it's more old school. Um, and there are pros and cons. Um, the biggest con I've found so far is that to address, adjust the speed on this thing, you, you need to open this box and change this belt onto different pulleys and possibly take the belt completely off and put two pulleys on, one from this pulley to this pulley and a second one from this pulley to this pulley. Um, that's a lot of work, it's sort of minimally five minutes um, so it's not something you want to do casually um, so that's the main or the biggest difference um, but this lathe is more it feels more solid in use um, I can cut a millimeter at a time on automatic feed no trouble at all it's very solidly built very stable um, I've adjusted all the gibs nothing wobbles or uh, rattles um, uh, this is an aftermarket thing, but it's very, um, very useful and does an excellent job of holding the tool bits. I got a lot of extras with this lathe. It's, I paid 565 for the lathe, but I also got these goodies here. This is a, a bunch of indexable tools. One of them's in the lathe, and loads of um, inserts carbide inserts so there's that it also came with this which is a lot of inserts and this is a zonking boring bar too big actually for the tool post that I've got um, but that's not all there's also um, a couple of other bits and pieces um, there's a, a face plate here there's a a fixed steady. Um, there's a rotary table with a collet chuck, and there's a four jaw brand new chuck there. Um, so that's a lot of good stuff. Um, but the, the best. The thing I can say so far is that the experience of cutting with it is really solid. So let's the, the weird thing is the arrangement of tightening the pulleys. I mentioned that you change the the speed by moving these pulleys. Well, what tensions the different pulleys is actually the weight of this motor. This motor hangs on a hinge and the weight of the motor is what puts tension in this belt. And um, so when you've got the right tension you stop it bucking around by adjusting these two nuts so that the weight of the motor is is allowing is being allowed to tension the um, the belt but the motor can't kick backwards as, as tensions come on and go off the belt so it's a lot more stable if you don't keep these close together with almost no room for movement then the motor bucks around 
um, in an alarming way. Anyway, let's shut this up. Run the thing. The um, there are two auto feed speeds. There's fast and slow, and this is engage or disengage. So let's engage. See the tail stop. Okay. That all works nicely. The biggest difference for me is that on the lathe I'm accustomed to using, this big wheel here moves the saddle up and down the bed. Whereas on this lathe, a similar big wheel located here moves the saddle across the slide. That's quite difficult to get used to. There is no similar wheel for controlling left-right motion. That's done with this handle here which would normally be the lead screw for screw cutting. There is a screw cutting facility on this lathe and it's implemented by tinkering with these gear wheels here. In fact there's a set of 13 gear wheels you can uh, acquire. They were missing on this lathe. I've, these are the only wheels I've got. There are four there. The set of 13 uh, new plus fat is 180, well, it's 180 quid plus fat so that's not going to get done anytime soon. Um, on uh, on this lathe, um, there are a similar set of change wheels for accomplishing uh, screw cutting threads. The table on this um, this this cowling shows what you set to get what effect you want, and when you've decided what you want, you change these change wheels here, and they change the relationship between the motion of the um, of the chuck and the motion of the lead screw, lead screw down there, so that's how that works here. If anyone out there does have a set of um, gear cutting wheels for this lathe um, then do please feel free to get in touch and I might be able to buy them from you. Anyway I hope you enjoyed that brief walk around my new lathe. Um, I consider it to be a bargain, I'm really pleased with the uh, quality of the work it's done so far and I'm looking forward to uh, making other projects, um, especially injectors, plastic injection molders on this machine.